Welcome. So you might have some Qt widget application that you might want to send to someone, but you don't want them to install Qt and do all this kind of stuff in order to set it up. You just want to send them a zip folder, they unzip it, they run the executable, and they can see what you've created. I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. So let's get started. So in here, I have just some simple code, and I'm going to run it just so you can see what I have. It's something simple. Anything you write here, it just gets added, kind of like a little chat. So I say, hello, YouTube. Right, that shows in red, and I can change it to blue. Hello, back, and it shows in blue. Right, nothing fancy and nothing crazy. So what you have to do first is you have to put this on release. Right, so whatever your application, you have it on release, and you build it. Mine's already built, so I don't have to do much for it. And then I'm going to go where this is built. So I'm going to go to my project folder. So I call this Qt Qt deploy, and then in here I go to 64-bit and I go to release. Uh, one thing that's important is that the person that is going to be running your application, they have to be under the same type of system. So this is a 64-bit for Windows. You have to send it to them to a 64-bit Windows. If you try to send it to a 32-bit Windows, then you have to compile this as a 32-bit Windows before you send it to them. So that's the one thing that you have to make sure that that's what you have to do. So in here, you have all these files that were generated by Visual Studio. I'm using Visual Studio. You might be using Qt Creator or whatever. I'm just using Visual Studio. The only thing you care about is the executable, right? So I'm going to highlight everything and just leave the executable and delete this. Now, I can run this, right? In my machine, I, I don't have to run it through Visual Studio. I can just double-click this, and I have my thing. The reason I can do that is because I have Qt set up in my path. So when he tries to search for the DLLs, he knows where to find them. It links them, and then that's it. It runs the, the application. If you do not have set up Qt in the path, when you try to do this, it doesn't work. And so it's kind of to, to show you what I mean, and this is kind of the error that you're, the person who will receive your software, that's the type of error they'll get, is that I'm going to remove Qt from my path. So you can see, so here's the environment variables. I'm just going to go to path, edit, and then uh, I can delete this too. So I'm just going to hit delete, delete, and I hit OK. And I hit OK. And if I try to run this, now it's like, hey, I can't find your Qt5 widgets, that DLL. I can't find core. I cannot find GUI. Right? And if you use any of the other ones, then it's also going to give you those errors. So what we want is we want to be able to just double-click this, and it runs. So to do that, we have to go use an executable that comes with Qt. So you have to go to the directory where you installed Qt. So in this case, I have it in another drive. So I have the D drive, Qt, and then this is the installation files. And you're going to go to the version that you're using. So I'm using 5.14.2. And then in here, I'm using the build for Microsoft Visual Studio 2017. Then you're going to go to the folder bin. Once you're in bin, uh, you're going to go all the way to the bottom. And in there, you're going to find one called Wind Deploy Qt. All right, and we're going to execute this, and this is going to generate or actually copy paste all the files that you need as part of your application, which you can all zip together and you send to your to your friends. So, what to do that? What I want you to do is I want you to hold the Shift key, the Shift key on your keyboard, and then right click on this window, and we're going to do uh oh, wait sorry. Do the shift key and right click. I clicked on the file. Don't click on the file. Right click on the folder space. And then you'll have an option that says open PowerShell window here. You might have the command line uh, enabled instead. That's fine. Doesn't matter which one you use. The other option is you just simply go to start menu, open a command line, and just navigate to this path. Right? It's up to you. Uh, I find this to be faster. And so what you're going to do is we're going to run the win deploy. So we're going to run this, this file that we have here, win deploy Qt. So I'm going to type win deploy automatically types it for me. And then this application takes an executable as an argument. And this thing will look for the DLLs that it needs and just gives it to them. So in here, which is that application? Well, the one we have created, my Qt deploy. In your case, will be whatever application you're using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this path. And I'm going to pass this to an argument. And, you know, I mean, Velcode, repositories, Qt deploy, Qt deploy, x64, release, because we're building this on release. And then in there, I will also include Qt deploy.exe, right? So, again, I run win deploy Qt exe with the argument uh, that I'm of the executable that I'm trying to generate all these files for. I hit enter, and this will automatically create all these things you need. And notice that when I ran it earlier, you didn't have Qt5 GUI, you didn't have Qt5 Core, you didn't have, uh, what was the other one? 
uh, there was another one. I forgot which one it was. But you didn't have those DLLs. Well, those that you need are copied here. So now, by simply just running this, ta-da, you just have the, the whole uh, executable ready. So what you do is you come back out here, you rename this, you know, to send, uh, whatever you want to call it, version or whatever, and then you just zip and zip it, or you just, you know, where, where you go. Uh, there's a way to zip things, but I forgot because I used 7-zip. But, you know, you just add to archive, and that's it. You just send that zip file to a friend. They unzip it. They run the executable, and they can run your application. All right, so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. This is for Windows. And, again, make sure that if you're doing it for 64-bit, if the person receiving it is going to be running on 64-bit, that you compile your application in 64 then if they're doing 32, do 32. All right, if you have any questions though, feel free to leave a comment below. If you like this video, if you found anything useful and you don't mind, leave a like. If you're new to this channel, check out the channel. And if you like what you see, subscribe, be safe, and peace out.